Yeah, I chose uh, P2-22. Um, little, little simpler than uh, 2-16, uh, um, but it um, gives us the opportunity to compare mirror and uh, the uh, the pattern. And then also the few things that we can do with the fillets. So as you're going uh, to um, to look at this geometry, the the couple of things that I see is that we could draw this um, as uh, three circles and a couple of lines, and then pattern the lines. We could also generate this uh, this outside side shape to the uh, to the sharps and then um, uh, pattern those around, mirror those over. So there's, um, there's at least two or three ways to, um, to go about this. All right, and there's no right or wrong way um, as long as it's uh, good staple geometry. So this is a uh, metric part, but I also want to detail what happens when you do something in inch that was metric, this is going to get pretty big. So, what, 20 feet? Yep, so if I go in and I do the, uh, the 240, and there should be some, some clues. All right, so 240.00 uh, with, uh, with metric, we're pretty much not going to see those. And the center segment was a radius of 30, so we'll go with the uh, the 60. Okay, so let's um, let's just say at this point I realized that um, my scaling is off. I only have a couple. This would be the point where I could change it. But let's say that I had this almost finished, all of the dimensions in place, and that we needed to um, to be able to um, uh, get this back to, to size. Uh, one option would be under our move entities to scale the entities, but there's always a little bit of uh, rounding error that uh, comes with scaling the overall entity. Um, and then uh, the feature uh, scale, yeah, wherever that one went, it's probably in the pull downs then. Um, insert features, and then we have a, uh, a scale for the, uh, the feature. And those aren't really as, um, as desirable. So um, I've mentioned the display delete relations. If we had a bunch of dimensions, so diameters, um, uh, dimensions, I could go through and delete. And then rather than redraw those, we would window pick and the scale so we want these to be smaller so right now it's set to 0.03937 which just happens to be what we want um, so there's uh, 39.37 millimeters um, or inches in a um, in a meter and so we divide that by a thousand that's where we get the 0.03937 if we were making this bigger, then we would go to the 25.4. And depending on how accurate we want to be, there are three zeros and an eight, and 25.4006. I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head. So anyway, we can um, we can tell it tell it to scale those. It will shrink it down, and then when we go back to our smart dimension. Well, we still happen to be in the inches, so 9.448. Let's see what that goes over to when we do um, millimeters, grams, and seconds. So whenever you change units, it's going to kick you out of the sketch. We're just going to left click and edit the sketch again. And so it goes 240, and what I'm interested in seeing is that round error. So 239.99952. Um, not a whole lot, but if we were expecting um, a, an alignment or something to uh, to be able to go on in the assembly, we might not get it. And there again, we're off, uh, what, two millionths of a millimeter, we're down into the sub-micron range. Or, so that part of it is, um, gets a little, uh, gets a little crazy. All right, so we're underdefined. 
So apparently when I scaled it, I lost that uh, coincident relation. Just grabbing the center point of the circle, drag it back, and then we'll, um, we'll go uh, with that. All right, um, so let's see, I need one more uh, circle. So I'll do the, uh, the click click. And let's, um, let's do the, uh, the linear example as well. So I'm going to place this as a linear uh, dimension for the, uh, for the diameter. It's a radius of 100. So that means we're going to be at 200. And if I wanted to see it as a radius, we can switch. And that would um, pick it up. We could also go back to the diameter. And then we can always go back to linear as well. So linear is going to kind of find its way around. And I think I can grab those handles. Nope, I'm pulling the, uh, the handle around that way. Which one was it? I don't do that very often. There we go. So there's a little grip, a little handle that pops up and you're able to um, to move that just like the other one. So let's stay with the radius, in which case we just grab the uh, the dimension go and go that uh, that route. All right, so let's um, go with the um, the line first. And a line. And notice that sometimes when you grab a grab an arc, well, it did there for a second. And then when you grab the um, the circle or the arc, it wants to go tangency, and it's going to stay tangency. There's nothing really I can do about that except undo. So I can also change the direction. Notice that we're getting a bunch of inference lines. So one of them is coincident with the center and the other two are tangent to the outside of that circle. All right, so we'll go ahead and let's pick those up. That would be the best way to go about, um, well, I can't necessarily mirror just yet because I have not generated a, uh, a center line to mirror about. So let's go with the circular sketch. There are a total of four of these. And they're going to be equal spacing. I haven't generated much in the um, the way of um, the other geometry, so we could go with see if it goes with a dimension radius. And we have the two lines, so let's just see what it does. All right, so it picked a point and went to the uh, the 30 millimeters. And if we were, I'm going to take the uh, the 30 millimeters out because I don't know that I really need that. We'll go to the start, 10 millimeters on the um, the half, and 20 millimeters on the full. All right, so those did not follow around, and actually that one. Looks like it might have uh, shifted a little bit. So when I look at this, I see a blue endpoint and a blue endpoint, and I'm not seeing anything that says that it is coincident. So grabbing a piece of geometry and dragging it until it becomes coincident, and then that one was close enough. No? There we go. I'm going to get some strange movement, but drag it until it's close enough to, uh, to complete. Then we have the um, pattern, vertical, and we grab that one, so those are horizontal. To me, that one still looks a little bit off, so I'm not sure what, uh, what I'm seeing there. Maybe just the extension line being so close. All right, and we'll put the through hole in, which was also, or was a diameter of 30. All right, so I have enough in there to um, get that going. So at this point, if you want to trim, you could trim. I think it is about as easy. We're going 16 millimeters. 
that if I wanted to do this as a, a shared sketch, we can go ahead and extrude that out. And then it doesn't have to be, I picked a, a contour, so let me go back in that feature and point that out. Notice it says sketch one contour. I picked the outside. It generated all of the, uh, the geometry in one shot. So I'm doing that for a, um, uh, so that I can go back and adjust for the mirror. I want to do a cut extrude using that same, same exact sketch. So by going into the cut extrude, we're going to tell it to go either through all or up to next. Make sure I'm in the little blue box. And then we can pick the areas that we want to remove. And so uh, that gives me the geometry. And if we go here and into our fillet, and I need to find one more, then we're going to get the in context or the context pop up that says I want everything attached in that um, in that geometry, all of the internals, all of the internals top and bottom, everything on that selection, and then all 50 edges. Well, we don't need to do all 50 edges. That's uh, a little much. So we pick those. It adds and populates out the items to fill it. And all radiuses are 10 millimeters, so we're good with the, uh, the default number. We can go ahead and hit OK. All right, so that gives me my, my geometry. And one of the things that um, I would do this for in what-if scenarios is maybe I, I do want to see what's going on with the um, uh, is the mirror better, is some part of this um, going to be better. So rather than delete something, we'll introduce the suppress. All right, we've, we've hidden some things, but we really just want to suppress this and it will treat it as if it's not there. So I can open up a new sketch and we need some center lines to act as our mirror. And I clicked on something there. We'll go horizontal. And let's see, I don't really need all of that. So we're going to go center point arc. And it didn't quite go the way I want, so we're just going to keep going. And then another center point arc. All right, so I kind of missed some of my dots, so we're just going to drag back to where it finds that. Um, well, it's showing me concentric, but pretty much I'm just combining those uh, two endpoints. So our dimensions go into 30. Um, actually, that one is going to be 15, 30 on the diameter, 15 on the, uh, the radius, and then the outside was a radius of 100, and then our offset was 10, and 10, and we got an angle dimension from the previous, so I'll just hit escape on the keyboard and put those in. All right, so both of these I managed to not pay attention and get the diametral or full dimension to go past the center line. So what that does is gives me the, uh, since it gave me the whole dimension, I'm just going to double click and then go back and change each of those to 20. All right, so we did the, um, the sketch feature, or the, um, uh, the, the fillet feature, and if we want to take a look at this as a sketch feature, I can go through, and why does that look really small all of a sudden? So, radius, oh, nope, I didn't do the, uh, the through hole, so let's go ahead and kick that one out. The, um, the radius was 30, and I was trying to do the, the center. So that's a little bit bigger. That looks like it will take the, um, the fillet. So let's go ahead. It's showing me the previews as I add them. And it's going to keep the constrained corners, which means that that geometry um, is, um, is still um, 
still there, still available anyway. And then we need, I'll go ahead and put that in since um, we're going to be using it. So 30. All right, so to pick all of this in one shot, because we're going with the mirror strategy, we're going to select the chain. So rather than going through and holding down control and select, 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 I'm going to right click, select chain, and then hold down the control button and grab just what I want to mirror entities. All right, and that's also going to help with select chain. I can hold down the control button, right click and select chain again, hold down the control button one more time and get my mirror. Uh, construction line and when we mirror now everything in here all of those little green dots um, and this is kind of the uh, the point as well of turning off our sketch relations is uh, that is going to be really annoying to work with we don't want to uh, to really do uh, to deal with that all right so the choice of putting the, the the sketch fillets in or doing a feature fillet it really just kind of depends on how many um, what you're what you're having to deal with and if you find that it's getting kind of tedious adding all of the sketch fillets it may be time to uh, take a look at what is um, uh, what is available in the uh, the option for the um, for the uh, for the feature. All right, so I didn't have to pick anything on that. So let's go back in the selected contours. It didn't expand out because we have those enclosed contours regions. There's no overlap. There's no um, no geometries that I um, I need to be concerned with where the other circles went all the way around and the lines intersected and we had those um, potential areas to uh, to work from this one is just a, a straight extrude so um, taking a look at it no minus sign everything's fully defined we'll save this and um, then we'll be ready to go on to the uh, the next